Good evening, dear women. Good evening, Brochot Avot. Welcome, Baruch Hashem. So happy to see you after a long vacation. Baruch Hashem, we finished the holidays last week. I saw part of you because we did not have it on the same day that we usually have it. And we learned about the word Ayeka, where are you, when God asks Adam Arishon after the sin, where are you? So we learned a lot of things about the word Ayeka. What does it mean? But I would like to connect it... I would like to connect it also to this parasha, Ayeka and Lech Lecha. Okay, because over there we said that Ayeka is Aleph Yud Chav Hei, and we said, I think it was Nira that mentioned that, that Aleph Yud is also Eretz Israel. And over here, God tells the first Jewish person that he wants him to go to the land of Israel. So first of all, let's bless the Vedat Hashem Yedia Mashiach Tzikenu Bimra B'Yamino. Shegia Mevaser Eliyahu Navi Eliyahu Tishviliyahu Bledi Mra Mnushech David Eliyahu Navi Zachor Lachem. So this is very interesting. If you pay attention, the first Jewish person from the first Jewish person from the creation until after Noah, the first Jewish person is Abraham Avinu. The first Jewish, and what is the first mitzvah that Abraham Avinu receives from Hashem? What is it? Lech lecha me'artzecha u'l'adatecha mi'bet avicha. He says, go, I want you to go from your land, from your homeland, and from your, the house of your father, to the land that I'm going to show you. He does not tell him that this is the land of Israel. He tells him, I want you to go. He does not give him the, dest the destination where he's going to go to. So he has to go with his faith. He believes in Hashem. And with his faith, he goes to the destination. Without, like, you know, you listen, somebody tells you, I want you to go to this house and that house. You will ask, why? Where is the house? What is the address? What do you want me to do there? But Abraham Avinu does not ask questions. He listens to Hashem because he feels that this is the truth. He's speaking to him as a divine, divine presence is speaking to him. He does, not, he does not see Hashem, but he hears a voice. So the voice, he knows it's a divine voice. And he goes from place to place. You know, what the, the beautiful thing about, about it is, it, you know that sometimes, mashal, sometimes there's you know, oil that has a good scent, smell, and it's closed, so you cannot smell the, 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 the beautiful smell, you cannot smell it, the nice smell that it has. But then when you open the box and you move yes. all around, then you have the smell all over and you say, wow, what good smell. Then you can bless Hashem and let's say the Samim. So this is the same thing, Abraham Avinu, that had a good smell. What was the smell? And I'm telling you, smell, so you'll tell me, but Abraham Avinu, what kind of smell? Did he put perfume? <laughs> No, Abraham Avinu had a good smell. His soul had a good smell. Because when Mashiach will come, he will know how to, to distinguish between the wicked and the good people by the smell of their soul. Not by the face, by reading their face. Moshe Rabbeinu and Shlomo Amelach and King Solomon, they knew how to distinguish between good people to bad people through the face. They could read the face. They could know through the face who's good and who's bad. But Mashiach, by the smell of the soul, which means each and every one of us has a soul with a smell. The, the soul has a smell. You know, you remember Arbat Aminim? We just finished Sukkot. And you remember that it says about Arbat Aminim that you remember they, they have smell and taste. Okay? And they are divided by the smell and taste. And why are they divided by the smell and taste? Because the taste, when you eat something and you taste it, does your neighbor enjoy the taste? No. No, you enjoy it for yourself, don't you? When we eat something yeah. and we taste it, they, you enjoy it for yourself. Right. Your neighbor cannot taste it unless he takes from, an, from it and tastes it himself, but he cannot otherwise enjoy it. It has to be his own experience in order to enjoy it. The same thing are people that study Torah and they do not spread it around. They study it from, for themselves. So they have taste. You understand? Those are people, those are righteous people that have taste, but they do not spread the taste all around because this is an individual ex um, they say, um, experience. experience. Individual experience. But when you have this good smell, 
Everybody that passes around you enjoys the smell. So, wow, what a good smell. That's a good smell. Should I bless over the smell or not? <laughs> so if, when you have a good smell, everybody enjoys it. So these are people who do ma'asim tovim. That they have also Torah, but they also do good deeds. And then everybody enjoys the good deeds because it's spread all around. Abraham Avin was the same thing. It says, the Baal Shem Tov says, there are two kinds of righteous people. And it's written in Tehillim, chapter Tzadik Bet, 92. And it's written, Tzadik Atamari Frach, Ka'er Azvan Valon Sget. Welcome, I was waiting for you. <laughs> I was asking for you. Ibadil Achayim Arukim, Metovim. So, it says, Tzadik Atamari Frach, Ka'er Azvan Valon Sget. Which means there are two kinds of righteous people. Righteous people that study the Torah for their own sake, but do not spread it all around. And then there are these righteous people that study the Torah and spread it all around. All the, all the smell, the good smell, in, all the other people enjoy it too. And then we are we all together combined as a one people, as, as a whole. Because then we complete each other. When we enjoy the good deeds of each other, we complete each other. So Abraham Avinu was walking and everywhere he went, shh, everywhere he went, Bezrat Hashem, he made the people which he saw that they can, it was where Yerei Shaman had the fear of God, he made them come back to Hashem, to notice that Hashem, Libriyut, to notice that Hashem is one in this world and He is the leader of the world. And He did that to the men and Sarai Menu did it to the women. So they converted everyone to Judaism. He was the first Jewish person. He was the first person to do Milah, to do with circumcision. He was the first one to do it. So we can see that Abraham Avinu reminds us of what kind of tzaddikim were in the, are in this world. But it starts with Lech Lecha. And you remember that everything that we learn now is connected to all the halachot that we are going to start to learn about how should a person conduct himself in this world. We're going to do it through Kitzur Shulchan Aruch and through Yalkut Yosef Blineder. But this is introduction to it and we're going to do it together. Ken. It reminds me of uh, the people we talk about, and you say, Stam, Blitam, Vreach, and like, so this is, has to do probably with the same thing. Okay, Vreach is something that they are very happy to do with us. When a person is happy, everyone is happy to do with himself. When a person is happy, everyone is happy to do with himself. But when he is happy, he is happy to do with everyone. But when he is happy, he is happy to do with everyone. When a person studies the Torah and he spreads it around, then the fume of prosperity that he has is spread around all over the people that listen to him. For example, we have a short Torah. So now, we read the book of the healing, and there's a tube that is open for us, and then the a tube, it's called the tube of wisdom. And this tube of wisdom now, that is shared between me and you, yeah. through Hashem, it's like, you know, it's, a, it's like a tap, berries, you know, that has a few uh, openings. Mm -hmm. And then when God opens the, the tap from, uh, from, from above, everybody that is underneath and wants to drink from the water, he can drink from it. And what is water? Which means water is Torah. Why is it considered as Torah? Because, shh, look, water is Torah because water in Hebrew is written mem. Yud, men. This is water, okay? This is water. Shh. This is the clue. Kemaim lemaim. What does it mean, kemaim lemaim? Like water to water. You will see that in the hidden letters in mem are the same letters. Kmotipat maim. Because mem, when we write it, bemiluyotiot, mem is mem, mem. You see? It's the same, it, it's the same letter. Which means kemaim lemaim, the mamash the same letter. We have here and we have here, mem ve mem. Do you understand when I'm... So look, I have a you that is the Ten Commandments, the Ten Counting of the Kabbalah, Keter, Chokhmah, Bina, this is the Yud. We have the Ten Commandments over here, look, and we have the Ten Sayings which Hashem created the world by them, by Ten Sayings. Vayi Or, Vayi Rakia, those are the Ten Sayings. 
And then the mem over here is an open mem, and then this is a closed mem, which means that when a person studies the Torah at the beginning, he does not yet know all the truth, and still the bad inclination works on him. But once he goes into the Torah, the mem closes, and the bad inclination cannot receive any holiness from this Torah. So he now wins the battle, and then the good inclination is all over him and helps him to decide, Livriut, and helps him to decide what to do in this world. Do you understand? This is the open man. When we look at Lech Lecha, look, what do we need to do? What does a Jewish person need to do? He needs to have Lamed is 30 numerical, val in numerical value, Chaf is 20, together it's 50. Okay, 50 gates of wisdom. So we have twice 50. The order Lech Lecha, twice, 50 plus 50 is 100. Okay. How many blessings do we have to do every day? 100. At what age did Abraham Avinu have Yitzchak? 100. Look over here, at what age? 100. And you remember how, what Arizal said about cursing? Klala. Look, a curse, Klala, if I, if I change the, the letters from the back to the front, okay? Zehei, Lamed, Lamed, Bekuf, which means Halel, Kuf, which means I'm going to praise the name of God with Kuf, with a hundred blessings. Kuf in numerical value is a hundred. Look, so look how it, it, when we study Torah and when we, spe sorry, I just, you see, I took the hay and put it, yes, instead of cursing, you have the word blessing, a hundred blessings. I just took the last letter and put it at the beginning, and then I took one by one, and you see it's Hallel. Hallel in Hebrew is to praise the name of God, and Kuf is a hundred in numerical values, which means Lech Lecha, a hundred blessing, which every Jew has to, do, to, to say every day. You see it in Lech Lecha? We have hints, Ken. It's like when somebody curses you, it's that you bless hundred times, right? Yes, Mevarchecha Baruch Baruch Arur. That's how it's written. Mevarchecha Baruch, which means he who blesses the children of Israel is blessed, and he who curses the children of Israel is cursed. This is the blessing that Abraham Avinu received from Hashem. Mevarchecha Baruch Baruch Arur. Okay. Okay. So it's a pech. The Arizal says it's. Sorry. But uh, here they show that whoever uh, cares is uh, uh, cursed, will be cursed. He will be cursed. Ken, Nachon, this is what the Chaim told Abraham Avinu. He who curses the children of Israel is cursed, and he who blesses them is blessed. Chad Mashmei. We are the children of Hashem, we are the first one of the children of Hashem. And, and if a mother uh, cares the children. Dear women, it's a good question. Dear women, let's pay attention. Uh, Shoshana asked a good question. She said, if God forbid a mother is angry and she curses her children. Oh, it's like a mother, that mother Kilu just cursed herself. I hear Be mothers, some mothers say, no, because I'm a mother, I'm allowed to curse No, dear women, I disagree. No, I listen very carefully. When, shh, I would like to tell you, when Yaakov Avinu blessed in Parashat, it's very important. When Yaakov Avinu, let me tell you, I know there are a lot of questions, let me answer this first. It's a good question. When Yaakov Avinu blessed Yosef HaTzadik, it was in Parashat Ve'echi, at the end of, of uh, Chumash Bereshit. We can see over there that he does not bless Yosef. He blesses his son, Menashe Ephraim. Ephraim and Menashe, he blesses them. And there's a question, the Midrash says, he blesses his grandchildren, but he does not bless his son? But the Midrash says, what is the true blessing of the parents? What is the, you know, it's written in Tehillim, Kuf Chet, 128. If you'll open the, the Psalm 128 in Tehillim, the blessing of, of each father and mother is in their children. If your children are blessed and they are good and they go in the ways of Torah and they get married and they, and they come to your home with your grandchildren and, and they are healthy and, and they're wealthy, you are happy and they are happy. But if your children, God forbid, get, get a divorce, 
or they are sick or something happened to your grandchildren, you are miserable. So the blessing is our children. This is This is what we have in this world. The whole blessing is the new generation. Because we feel nachat only if they are good, if, if they have a good life. If they are not married, we are very disturbed. So if, if something happened to them, they do not study well, we are disturbed. When do we have true nachat? When our children are happy. When we see that they are happy. This is a true nachat. When we see also our grandchildren. This is the true nachat. So this is the nachat. So if God forbid we curse, it's like a, our children. It's like we're taking a gun and shooting our, our legs. It's the same thing. Dear women, we should not curse anyone. We should leave everything to our shame. And our children, listen very carefully. Every day, before we go to sleep, we should mention that our children's name. Dear women, listen. If this, this is very important. Luma Esther Batlea. We will mention, let's say the mother is land, the child is Esther. She would say, Esther Batlea, machulach, 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 melechila, melea, vedmoa, every night. You should forgive your children totally every night. Why? And you say that you have a why? Because from the age of 12 for women, for, ch for girls, and the age of 13 for boys, mm -hmm. then all of the mitzvahs are on the, upon themselves, yeah. and their sins are also upon themselves. Mm -hmm. So if they made you angry, God forbid, they don't have a rechut yamin. They are not blessed with long life. Listen very carefully, because kabedet avi chavet imecha leman yarechun yamecha al adama. In order to prevent this, because we are parents, we love them anyway, but sometimes we get angry and we don't pay attention. So before the day goes out, every time, especially, you can say, all of my children, forgive them, but let's say that was made, made you angry today, okay? Uh -huh. You should say, if her mother is Leah, and from all of your heart, have a mechila, yes, that you forgive. Mechila. Mechila melea vegmura. Every day, then, then God does not consider that as a sin for this child. Mechila melea vegmura. Mechila or machul? After you say machul, 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 you say mechila melea vegmura, which means you don't have anything in your heart against them. You say machul three times, and then you say mechila melea. Dear women, why is it like? Because there are three. It's very important. Yes. Machul uh, means forgive. Yes, you say forgive, but a whole forgiveness. You finish with a whole forgiveness. You don't have anything in your heart. Yes, but especially your children, because they spoke about children that, if God forbid, women sometimes uh, mothers cross their children, God forbid. Mamasha's soul. Because it's like they are shooting their own legs. God forbid, Ken. Machul, 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 so he was announcing Hashem in this world. He made people aware that Hashem is in this world. And that the idols that they are worshipping, the idols, the idols that they are worshipping are not true. This is a false God. So they announced Hashem in this world and the people that were part of the children of Israel came close to them. Do you understand? Because the first human being had all the souls of all the children of Israel and all the nations. 
Yes. We're going to speak about the first human. He has all of the souls. So then Abraham Abinu took the souls. You know, it's gathering. Why are we in exile? You know that to gather all the special... Harizal says we are in exile in order to take all the sparkles of Hashem that are in human beings around the world and to take them and to bring, back, to bring them back to the children of Israel. They stop to gather them. Because when the first human being sinned, then there was a mix. A mix of good souls and bad souls. You understand? The good and the bad was mixed all over. So now we have to evolve to just, um, you know, when you take rice, it's separate, like when you take rice and you have to see that there's no worms inside or nothing and it's green. The same thing we do now. So Moshe Rabbeinu took 202 Erev Rav out of Egypt. Those are already the sparkles of Hashem, it's the sparkles of souls that were pure, that he took, took them out of Egypt with the children of Israel. You understand? This is what we need to do now. When Mashiach comes, dear women, there won't be any conversion anymore. There won't be Gerim, Gerit Tzedek. That's the end of the process. There won't be any Gerit Tzedek anymore. The children of Israel will not accept any Gerit Tzedek. <coughs> when Mashiach comes. Let me ask you something. The process of converting. Mashiach comes and they're already starting to learn to, with the idea of converting. Then, 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 Bezat Hashem, God will decide if they are uh, will be accepted because they started the process or won't. But then there won't be new ones that will come to the religion. You understand? Okay, so, yes. Uh, question. Okay. <laughs> it's, uh, you may laugh, but can we say the same thing on Georgian? Every night, like the, uh, like the my uh, children. Uh, oh, 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 of course, you should forgive every human being that did wrong to you. And I tell you, I can. Yes, yes, of course, the language. Okay, you can say that. It's okay. You can say that in Hebrew and in Hebrew. <laughs> You could say that in any language that you want, the only the purpose is that there won't be a sins upon yeah, them. Yeah, you understand? Because Kabedet Avi Chabeti Men. You imagine you imagine I'm asking you to do this, making you some and I want to. Okay. No. So we. What's the matter? Who all this? I don't know. She has to come. <laughs> okay. Let's continue. So now, what is the purpose of us in this world? We're going to... We came to do the fixing of the first human being. But first of all, with what measure did Hashem create the world? So with what measure we should fix the world? It's important. If you have questions, I will answer them. So with what measure <laughs> we should fix the world? So God created the world with the measure of truth. Shh. You can see that a long time we did not meet each other. <laughs> okay. We can see that God created the world with a measure of truth. The seal of Hashem is truth. It says in the Gemara that the seal of Hashem is truth. Bereshit bara Elokim, at the beginning, God created the end letters of each word is Taf Aleph Mem. Together, Taf Aleph Mem is truth. Amen. Truth. But you can see that it's not in order. Shh. You can see over here that it's not in order. But if I'll continue, if you look over here, Bereshit bara Elokim Et, so I'll take this, the Aleph, the Mem, and the Ta, Aleph, Mem, the Ta, you can see it's in order, Emet. You see, it's in order over here. When I continue off of Bereshit, Bara Elokim, Et, I can see Aleph, Mem, Ta. This is Emet, truth, in order. And then at the end of creation, it's written, Asher Bara Elokim Laasot. So again, I have Aleph, which means that God uh, created over here the world, and I have Aleph, Mem, Betaf, again a myth. So it starts with a seal of truth, and it ends with a seal of truth. But at the beginning, the words emit are not in the same, in the right order. And what does that mean? Okay. Taf, 
means the, the tough numerical value is 400. You remember how many soldiers Esav came in order to fight Yaakov? 400. 400. 400. You remember Eliyahu Anavi Zachur Latov? Eliyahu Anavi. Why do we say Eliyahu Anavi Zachur Latov? We do not say that about any other rabbi. Because Eliyahu Anavi, Eliyahu, Hanavi Livriut, Zachur Latov, in numerical value is 400 against the 400 soldiers of Esav. That's why it's 400. It's uh, against the 400 soldiers of Esav. This is a numerical value. This is the secret of an Yaw Navi It's against the 400 soldiers of Esav. Taf is 400, which means that Taf, the last letter of the Hebrew alphabet, this is by the Pardes, has 400 shells before you know Hashem. You know, the Aleph is one, Bet is two, which means Bet has already two shells that cover the name of God. Then Gimel has three by numerical value. So it's harder to see Hashem in Taf because you have 400 um, borders that you have to go over, you know, obstacles to go over them in order to see Hashem because it's 400 soldiers of Esav and Esav is from the other side, it's Amalek. So we have 400 things that, uh, that did not help us uh, um, realize Hashem in this world, to see the truth in this world. And then we have Aleph. Aleph, you know, it's the name of God. You remember I showed you Vav and two Yudim? It's the name of God. And then we have Mem. Mem is right in the middle. Mem starts water, Maim, and ends water. And Maim, water, is Torah. What do water do? They go from a high place to a low place. So water are humble. Water teach us, when we look at the water, it teach us you, uh, hum, to, to be humble, humbleness. So it teaches us how to, to take our pride, and to squash our pride and move it away. And remember, where will my help come from? It will come when I am Ayn, when I know that I'm nothing in this world that I cannot change anything unless I pray to Hashem and only by my prayers I change. How do we know that? It comes from Bereshit. First of all, Bereshit, Bereshit in the beginning, it says God created the universe only because of the Torah and the children of Israel that will study the Torah. So Maza Bereshit. So Bereshit stands for, can I wipe a little bit of the board? Okay. What is Bereshit? You'll see how everything that we need in order to serve Hashem is at the beginning of creation and how it's connected to the other parshiyot. So look, Bereshit, it is Bishut. The bed is Bishut. You see the bed? You see it? Shishim, Ribo, Yisrael. Torah. It stands for Bishut in the merit of Shishim Rivo of 60,000 children of Israel who love the Torah. This world was created. This is Bereshit. You see Bishut Shishim Rivo Israel Oavei Torah. This is Bereshit. And how do we know? Because the children of Israel are called Reshit Vuata in the prophet Yirmiyahu. It's the first harvest of Hashem because we are the, His firstborn. And then how does the Torah end? How does the Torah end? It, it ends by the word Israel. The last word in Chumash Dvarim is Israel. The last word. So you will ask me, so how do we know that the, God created this world for the, the sake of the children of Israel, that they will study the Torah. Otherwise, this whole world goes to chaos. Do you understand? If we won't study Torah, if there won't be any Jew that will study Torah, the whole world goes to chaos. So how do we know? So Israel means Yesh, Shishim, Ribo, Otiot, La Torah. You see? Yesh, this is the Yud, Shishim, Ribo Otiyot La Torah, which means there are 60,000 uh, letters to the Torah. 
the Torah, which the children of Israel are going to study. And then we go to Mishlei to King Solomon. He says, Torah is Rashid Darko, the beginning of his way. Because God looked at the Torah and, and created the world. He looked at the Torah and created the, at the beginning first the letters were created. The Rashid Barai Lokim, at the beginning God created it. The letters, the Hebrew Aleph bed from Aleph to Taf. You see how beautiful it's connected? So I'm talking about, okay, now we know that we are the beginning. And the Torah is the beginning. And we can celebrate because we study the Torah so we help God with the creation. That's what God said. We should make a human being as us, in our image. Why did he say? תורה <laughs> So, if the Torah was written, uh, when were the letters created? So, the, crea- the letters were created before the Torah was written. Yeah. Then the Torah was written. Then it says also that the Malachim say that a child of the Shivim, if I remember, the whole generation, this Torah is standing in heaven. And God, you want to give it to the children of Israel? To give it to earth instead of leaving it in heaven? So, first of all, before the Torah was written, and you, I have to tell you, the Torah is very deep. What we read in the Torah, the stories, is so in order that our brain can understand it as human beings. But then, Bezrat Hashem, when we will have a bigger brain, which means I don't mean that in size, <laughs> the, the capacity of, all the, uh, of the potential of us to understand things will be bigger, Bezrat Hashem, because we do not use all our brain. But when we have more capacity, and instead of all the physical world, we'll take it out and we'll understand what the truth, because this is the measure of truth. What is the truth in this world? Then we won't have any problem. Then we have a bigger capacity. It's like the, the, the older generations. They had all the Mishnah they knew by heart. They didn't have to study it from books. It's only us, our generations. Because then you build down a sea when he saw that the generations after the exile may forget all the Mishnah because they, don't, they cannot study and because of the exile they had hard time. So he said, we have to write it. So who are the Mishnah? And then Ravashi came and he saw, but they don't even understand Aramaic and they don't have, understand the holy language. So we have to explain the Mishnah. Then they wrote the Gemara, the Talmud Bagli was written. And then the Talmud Yerushalmi was written. Because they understood that the, even if you read the Mishnah, you do not understand what's written over there. So they had to explain it. But today, even the Gemara is not impossible to understand. You can start reading it and it's not easy to understand it. Even if you know Hebrew. First of all, it's not exactly the holy language. So it's hard when you read it. And then you have to have Siyat Adishma to understand it. Let's say you do understand to understand it correctly and not to go to false places. So it depends one on another. I would we'll start it with zero because we don't know even language. But you know, we know, we sit down and study together for a few years already. So there's a lot of shit that we let us come in. So dear women, Yes. Yes, Torah equals life. Without the Torah, there's no life. Light and life. There's no life. You do not have, like it says, you know, that Mara says that if you feel a headache, you have to study Torah. It says if your throat hurts, you should study Torah. If your hands hurt you, you should study Torah. If your legs hurt you, you should study Torah. If you have a sickness, you should study Torah. Because this is the cure for everything. If your whole body is, is sick, you should study Torah because the Torah... Huh? That's okay if you're tired. Because if you're tired, I would like to mention... You go sleep and you're not going to... No, no, you, re- you will remember everything. Because the soul is not limited in time and space. It's the body that is limited. 
So that's why you're sometimes tired and you want to sleep, but your soul listens to everything. Everything that is said in this lesson, it listens to. And when you go at night and you sleep and the soul goes up to Hashem, she gives the whole din b'cheshbon, everything that she studied in the Torah, because she remembers. You think you don't remember, but the soul does. So you have a big marriage because the soul does. Can I ask you yes. I'm sorry. Yes. Yes. Can I ask you something? Is anything it's prescribed or any explanation in the Torah that what is the the dream is about? What a dream is? Like the, you sleep, you are asleep, you're dreaming something. Yeah. And uh, the, any that, explanation? There are messages. Those dreams are messages. But this is a whole lesson. There are Why people have such a message? Yeah, but the, the, you still have some, 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 something, uh, whatever I dream of it, sometimes the, something, uh, the, I feel like something is coming, or someone is telling this, because, trying to tell me something. Uh, let me or the, 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 the Okay, she asked what happens when a person is asleep. It's true when you are asleep. It's one sixtieth of death. Your soul goes up and she gets messages. And you know there are bad angels on the way through to heaven. So if you're a good person, the angels open the path for you to get to a good place. If you're not such a good person, the angel, the bad angels come. This is true. This is around us. We just cannot see it. But, but I know they, one thing that the dream does not last more than a one minute. That's the, the it's already proven. Sometimes you're dreaming, you somebody's chasing you, you're oh, running, yeah. and you think it's all night is going on, and you, the, you're waking up, you're like having a heart attack. Long, long film. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, sometimes you dream the, the, the black and white, sometimes you dream in the, the color. <laughs> okay, dear women, a dream is a message. It says about the dreams they get, like a, like a letter. <laughs> dear women, like a letter that you should open. Now, there are three dreams that are true dreams. Midat HaEmed, the truth measure. A dream that repeats itself is a true dream. This is one. A dream that repeats itself. And not, <laughs> the same dream comes in. Here is, here is. I have one. I will give you a dream that I will tell you story. I, I, I want to tell you something. Sometimes you wake up, the, you are all sweating. You don't want to continue this dream. You just go to the bathroom. You come and go. You just continue this dream. Okay, the only thing is a whole session about dreams. But I will tell you just three kinds of dreams are true dreams. One that repeats itself, or dream that you dream in the morning before you wake up. This is a true dream. And dream is that other people dream for you, about you. You understand? This is the truth. Only three dreams are true. One that repeats itself. One that you dream in, uh, in the morning, early morning hours. And one that another person dreams about you. And he comes and tells you this is a true dream. And sometimes you are the between sleep and the... the, 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 the yeah, you still see something. So I'll tell you, there are also angels. There are angels also that. There are a lot of dreams that don't have any truth in it. Let's listen. Listen. Okay, let's concentrate. Dear women. Dear women, listen very carefully about about the dreams. I want to tell you that there are a lot of dreams that are not true. There are bad angels that are playing with your mind, and there are false messages. But I told you that there are three. There are three. Every person has it, and you have to distinguish between the correct and the, the non-correct. So, which means the truth and non-truth. But it depends, I told you about three things. If someone dreams a dream about you, this is a true dream. If you dream a dream uh, in, in early morning hours, it's a true, and one that repeats itself. You know, every day you dream, or every three days the same dream comes to you. It's okay. It's okay. Okay, let's continue. Let's continue. It's very important. Shh. So I want to, to speak about this issue. When I told you that at the beginning, 
Okay, Bereshit Bara Elokim. The the three words that open the Torah that say you see the letters of emet, the letters of truth that they are mixed up over there and they're not in the right order. It means that even though we do not find our path in this world, it's very hard. We should seek it, and a little by little we will know Hashem in the measure of truth. We can distinguish with, between truth and false and lie. And then we can know how to worship Hashem and we will come, you see, to the continuation of the sentence and we will have the word emet in the right order. Do you understand? The and then... This, is, this gives us, from the words of Bereshit, it gives us the way how to worship Hashem. So even though we can see that we make mistakes, but still, if we will continue in the same path, because God said, Pitchuli Chodashel Machat, open for me the tip of a needle, and I will open for you paths that carriages and horses will go through. So we should stick with the value of truth with Hashem, and be also true to Hashem in our hearts. It's not only that we will speak to Hashem, but we have to be true, true to Hashem in our hearts and our mouth together. So I would like to tell you, we can see in this parasha, I would, I would like to give you a few measures. That's why the Rechagav, it says in Masechet Chagiga, it says that Le'olam Adam ilmat Torah shelo lishma ve'yagiya lishma. Which means you should always study the Torah even if you don't understand, if you, if you don't really mean it for the sake of Hashem, because eventually God will help you to go to the right path. Because you made the effort, you just need to make the effort and God will help you. So this comes from here. When you don't study lishma, for the sake of heaven, this is when the letters of the emet are not in the right order. But then eventually God will help you to put them in the right order, and then you can worship Hashem in the right way, Bezat Hashem. And when you do that, also your children do that, because they see you and they imitate you, and everything that they get from home, they will do, take it out like a sponge when they are older and when they get married, they will do the same thing. Even though at the beginning they will say when they are teenagers, Mother, I don't like you. You're not modern. You're not like us. But you will see that when they get married, all of the, everything yeah. that they were taught, they do the same thing. It's only the teenagers that are a problem. That's why it calls. It is called in Hebrew tipesh uh, esrei. Tipesh esrei means like uh, tipesh in Hebrew is stupid. Esrei is a tent. A teen. A teen. So. This is, it, it's really the age of Tibesh So, <laughs> in this chapter, it says over here that Malkit Sedek, Melech Shalem. We we want to study what we should do. How should how should we should contact ourselves? So we can study from the Lech Lecha a beautiful thing about Malkit Sedek and the relationship with, between him and Abraham Avinu. You remember in, in Lech Lecha? Don't forget that I I gave you a lot about the Parashot of Shavuah, about the portions of the week. You have it on Torah anytime that comes. You can go to Parashat Lech Lecha. But I'm going to give you the, something special now. It says about Malkitzedek. Malkitzedek, you remember, first of all, Lot, the nephew of Abraham Avinu, was captured. Okay. Okay? And you remember that Lot went with Abraham Avinu and Sarai as a partner. But then they split. Why? Because they had a fight. Their shepherds fought between each other. And, the, and Abraham Avinu told him, okay, tell me what you're going to do. If you go right, I will go left. And if you go left, I will go right. Decide where you're going to. And Lot, and Lot was the reason that they, the shepherds fought between themselves. So what did Lot do? He went to Sdom Amora. Yes. And we know that, which means that Lot, once he was with Abraham Avinu, he, he tried to be righteous. He learned from his ways. But he wasn't really pure in the way that he wanted to do that. As soon as he left him, he went to Sedem and Amora. Inside, he wasn't really pure. You have to be pure. 
So dear women, it says in this portion of the week that Lot was captured by the four kings because he had a lot of property. He was rich. Like Abraham Avinu, he was rich. So Lot had a lot of property. The four kings took Lot. And look what Abraham Avinu does. He, ta he takes 318 soldiers to take, not really soldiers, the ones that are in his home, and he takes them in order to help the, the servants that he have and the slaves, and he takes them in order to save Lot. And you will ask me, why does he go to this trouble shh, to save Lot? Because we just said that Lot wasn't really pure from inside. And he's going to fight four kings that are very strong. This is the first war we can see in, in, in the book of Bereshit. The first war from the beginning of humanity, this is the first war. So we can see this was the first war. We can see he goes against them. And the question is, why does he go against them? And why 318? 318, that's what he had in a few minutes. Dear women, listen very carefully. And not only uh, Abraham Avinu goes to save Lot, also the angels go to storm. They go to storm, the two angels, Gabriel and Michael, they go into storm and they take him and his wife and they take his children out of storm in order that he won't get hurt. Mm -hmm. What is the merit of Lot? Because we didn't see a lot of merit, so what is? And he wouldn't have had achnasat alchim, you know, taking visitors inside his home if he did not think that those are angels. So what? The question is, why everybody is saving love and going over their way to save love? <coughs> Dear women, it is it, it's connected to our future. To Mashiach Tzikhan, which I gave him Rabbi Amen. Why? Because Lot. Look. Lot had two girls, two daughters, okay? Two daughters. And you remember that his daughters gave him to drink alcohol, and the first time the, one of the daughters slept with him, and the next night, because they thought that nobody stayed in it. The whole world is ruined, and they are the only human beings that are in the world. But not Shalot. The, the daughters of Lot, they thought that the whole humanity after Sodom and, Sodom and Amora, that fire went from the sky and burned everything, and Gofrid and Sophia was there. They thought that there was no human being anywhere in the world. So they said, what shall we do? We have to, uh, to multiply. We, we have to reproduce. So they decided that they're going to be with their father. So, right decision? Right you'll see what went out of it. <laughs> so, <laughs> This is, remember that this is before the time that we received the Torah, okay? So dear women, Lot had two daughters, okay? So from one daughter that was with him, shh, the youngest daughter came from her, her name was Naama. All the nation of Ammon, Naama Ammonit. All the nation of Ammon came out of Naama. And the, all the daughter, all the nation of Moab came out of her. All the nation of Moab. Now, Benama Monit, from one of his daughters, there was the soul of Rabba, Rabba Hamorai. Rabba Hamorai. There was a sparkle of a holy person inside of a holy soul inside Lot. Two souls were inside Lot. One of them was Rabba Amori, and the other one was David Amelech. Because from Moab came Ruth. Ruth, the okay. From Moab came Ruth. Listen, you remember I told you. Look how beautiful. And I will show. If you'll continue with me, I can show you the proof from the parasha. Sorry? Second daughter's name. Well, was the nation. Yeah, the it's not mentioned her name. I didn't find her name mentioned, oh, okay. but I can search if there's. Oh, okay. But the nation of Moab came from the first, the, the oldest one, and, the, and from the oh. youngest one, Ammon, the nation of Ammon. And Rabba Moai came out of Ammon, and David Amelech came out of Moab. These are, you remember, the Arizal says, in order that a holy soul will come out, sometimes God has to do it in mysterious ways. He puts it, it's, it's like, 
Think about Paro, the king Paro. Think about him. He was the height of one amma. One amma. Only a, Moshe Rabbeinu was ten amma. <laughs> and he was the height of one amma. I think if he did this with his leg, he would have uh, smashed him. <laughs> but think about Paro. Paro wanted to kill the, the boys, the children of Israel. And they made the children of Israel slaves. But, and he knew that there was supposed to be a boy from the children of Israel that will take his throne and that he will embarrass him and that he will ruin all Egypt. But this boy that was going to ruin all Egypt was sitting on his lap. And he was playing with him. Look at Paro, he was playing with him. He was playing with the same boy, Moshe Rabbeinu, that was supposed to ruin his life. So this is what God does. He puts a precious soul in a place that, is, that looks dirty in order that the evil inclination cannot, Satan cannot say anything. He will say, oh, anyway, this precious soul went into a very dark place, a very dark family, and everything is sinned over there, everything is dirty. He, he won't do what he needs to do because he will get ruined, this soul will get ruined there. But God has different, different thoughts. So God puts it in a place that, you know, the, the evil inclination is under our nose and it gets out and saves the children of Israel. It's like Paro. He was sitting Moshe Rabbeinu on his lap. He was playing with him. This was the, the Moshe Shalom Israel. This was the salvation of the children of Israel and he was in his home, in his palace, under his nose. He was looking at him all the time and he was searching for him. So these are the ways of Hashem in order that this precious soul will go out. And Abraham Avinu saw that this, there are two precious souls in Lot. He saw that. So that's why Abraham Avinu and the angels went to save him. Those were very big precious souls. This is David Amelech, that from him comes Mashiach. You see? So we can see Lot. And then Abraham Avinu saves Lot and he comes back and he goes through Jer Jerusalem and Jerusalem then is called Shalem and he goes to Malkitzedek, Melech Shalem and Malkitzedek was Rashi says Shem ben Noah Malkitzedek is the son of Noah remember he had three sons Shem, Ham, and Yefet from Yefet comes Gog and Magog Yaban and Gog and Magog Ham are the black people and Shem are us Okay, Hashemim, Amim Hashemim. Okay, so Shem ben, Shem ben Noach is Malki Tzedek. Malki Tzedek means the king of justice. This is Malki Tzedek. Melech Shalem, the king of Shalem. The city was called Shalem. And after Kedat Yitzchak, you remember when Abraham Avinu took Yitzchak in order to sacrifice him, he called the city, the place, Yireh. So that if you take Yireh and you take Shalem, it's Yerushalayim, Jerusalem. It's together, okay? That's her name, Jerusalem, Yerushalayim. The combination of Malki Tzedek, Melech Shalem, he called it Shalem, and Abraham Bin called it Yireh, and together it's Jerusalem, Yerushalayim. So dear women, he comes to him. So he greets him, Malki Tzedek, and he greets him so happy. I'll just give you from the Midrash, uh, from the Mikra, just a minute. You died. One of the sons of Noah, Shem ben Noah. Rashi says, Malki Tzedek is Shem ben Noah. You can see, you know, in, the, in King, in King, huh? he had three sons, Shem, Ham, and Yefet. Malki Tzedek is the name of Shem. Okay. He was the father of the Spanish nation. Ken, Ken. He was a continuation. But listen, dear women. It says, Umalki Tzedek Melech Shalem, and you know King David in his Psalms also write, uh, writes about him in chapter 110. You also, you read it in, in Tehillim. 110, you read about Malki Tzedek. Malki Tzedek is this Malki Tzedek, okay? Shem Ben Noah. So it's written about him like this. Umalki Tzedek Melech Shalem, Hotzi Lechem Beyayin Behu Kohen Leel Elyon. So Malki Tzedek Melech Shalem was so happy to see Abraham Avinu, he took out bread and wine in order to greet him. And then it says like this, Vayibarcheu, and he blesses him, Vayomer, Baruch Abraham le'el el yon, Konesh amayim It says, Bless Abraham, 
to God, that is the God of the universe that created heaven and earth, he says. He says, and God, and God, uh, God is blessed that he helped you from your enemies, that you saved Lord, he says. But the question is very weird. Why did he greet him with wine and bread? And why is it written in the Mikra? Why is it so important that we will not... The, 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 when Abraham came, he greeted him, he blessed him. And then he, he tells, he gives him bread and wine. And they write it in the Mikra because it's enough to say that he blessed him and he gave him food. Why do they say bread and wine? Why is it so important to let him be it's, oh, again, it's, it's how we should conduct ourselves. It's part of conducting ourselves. So listen, dear women. First of all, it's very weird that you should ask me a question. If Melchizedek was so righteous, Melchizedek was very righteous, why did the Jewish nation not go out from him directly? Why through Abraham Avinu? Why? Why? Think, think about it. There were righteous people from the beginning. Hanoch was righteous. He became an angel, Metatron. Hanoch Yashar, he went to heaven without he dying. With God. He was yes. walking with the God. Yes, exactly. And he went, and this is in Bereshit. It doesn't say he passed away. No, he went. There are ten people that went alive to heaven. He is one of them. So Hanoch was a very righteous person. Why would the Jewish nation did not come out of him? Metushelach was also a very righteous person. Noah was righteous. Shem was righteous. Eber was also righteous. But the Jewish name, the first Jewish person, is called Abraham Avinu. I would like to tell you, it's beautiful. So just let's pay attention. You just mentioned they were not Jews, they were just righteous. Yes, they were righteous like Chasidei Umot Olam. They were righteous, they knew Hashem, and they studied for Hashem, but they are not considered as Jewish people. Okay? The, the first Jewish people, the first Jewish man is Abraham Avinu. The first woman is Sarah. So, listen, in Bereshit Rabbah, it's written beautiful, I would like to give it to you, and you will be astonished. It says, B'schuto shel Abraham, Amar Rabbi Levi, Ha'adam ha'gadol ba'anakim ze Abraham. It says, Rabbi Levi says, that the biggest uh, giant of men is Abraham Avinu. The gi biggest giant, well, you will ex ex expect that it will be a, the first human being. The biggest giant of men should be the first human being. Lama koreo to gadol, why does the Mikra call him big? Shehaya ra'uy li barot kodem la'adam arishon. Abraham Avinu was supposed to be born before, was supposed to be created before the first human being. Lipnei Adam HaRishon. Wait, I'll explain everything. We'll do it together, you'll enjoy it. Wait. El Amar HaKadosh Baruch Hu, but God said, Shema Yekalkel, maybe the first human being will make a mistake. Ve'en mi she'avol et ha'kem tachtav, who will fix it? I will create the first human being that will have all of the souls inside him. If we will make a mistake, Abraham then Abraham will come and will fix the souls. <laughs> Look how beautiful. Listen, dear women, it's, it's very important. So how did he fix Abraham? Sorry? The Bereshit Rabba. So it's Yudalim. So he made sure to have the someone to... Ben Abagad, <laughs> this is a plan. <laughs> he, God made sure. Bereshit bar Elokim et ha-shamayim et ha-aretz, ve-aretz et ha-tahor v'ho, v'choshech al-ben-tahor, ve-ruach Elokim al-tahor v'ho, v'ho, Mashiach was born, the soul of Mashiach at the beginning, at the first sentence. He knew already that what we are going to do, because he knows we have evil inclination. So he knows we are doomed to do wrong things, and we have to to fix the letters of a made of truth and to put them in the right place and it takes time. So he's waiting for us. Dear women, God is waiting for us. We need to do the right thing, dear women. So we can see over here that Abraham Avin was supposed to be created before, before Adam Rishon, before the first human being. I would like to tell you, you remember the first human being sin. With what did he sin? So listen, it says in the Gemara, he made a sin. He ate from the tree of knowledge. 
Okay. The first human being ate. I would like to tell you also a story. So let me finish the idea so you will understand. Because you will go home and you tell your husband the idea. <laughs> because it's concerned with the Kiddush of Yom Shabbat, dear women. So it's important. So dear women, the first human being sinned by eating from the tree of knowledge. Okay, so what was the tree of knowledge? What was the tree of knowledge? Look, okay, I'm showing you, you see, all the Torah is connected. We see that Mashiach is connected, the Amoraim, the Rabbah Amoraim is connected. Everything from the beginning is connected. We are the same souls, just we, came, we come in recoordination until the sparkle that we need to fix is fixed and goes back to the throne of Hashem. So it says in Masechet Brachot, chapter, chapter page, page 40, it says like this, Ilan she'achal memenu Adam HaRishon, it says, the tree that the first human being ate from it, Rabbi Meir Omer, Gefen. Rabbi Meir says it's grapes. <laughs> and, then, and then it says, uh, Rabbi Nechamia says, Tena, that it's, Tena is a Tena, fig. Fig, fig, no fig. So Rabbi Nechamia says it's fig. Why? Because they, God dressed them with a fig, yeah. with a leaf of fig. And then it says, and then it says that uh, Rabbi says Shitam Tam Dagan, which means the third explanation is Chita. Chita means wheat. Chita is wheat. So we have three things, three explanations that say that the tree of knowledge was either grape tree, or it was a, a fig tree, or it was Chita, wheat. Okay, three things. How do we know that all of them divrei lokim chayim? All of them are true. We have three holidays, high holidays. Remember that we just had one of them. We have Sukkot, Pesach, and Shavuot. And God says in these three holidays, you should go to the temple in Jerusalem and give offerings to me. Look how beautiful it is. Which means Tachog. You will see this is the Chog. You should celebrate these high holidays. The top of celebrate in Hebrew is Tena, the fig. The Chet is for Chita, and the Gimel is for Gefen. Look how beautiful it is. The three high holidays. So by going to the Jerusalem, to the temple in Jerusalem, and by celebrating and giving offering of food to Hashem and animals, we are fixing the fixing of the first human being with food. Why? Because the first human being, how did he sin? He ate. And then all of the souls that were inside, they ate with him. So they are part of the sin. That's why we all, we all, we all know that we are, we are born in this world and we pass away from this world. Because we all ate from it. Each and every one of us, we are part of the same soul. So we also ate from it. So you see over here that when we tachog, nachon shloshet regalim, tachog the three holidays, we make we do a fixing. What did Malki Tzedek want to hint to Abraham Avinu? He wanted to hint to him that you are the fixing of the first human being. How did he hint? With bread that is made out of wheat and wine that is made out of grapes. So he hinted to Abraham Avinu, you are the fixing of the first human being. And he blesses him for that. And he says to him, I bless and I bless Hashem that helped you to, to help, to, to take Lot and to overcome all of your enemies. He blesses him over there. So from this we can see that the destination of a person is already written in heaven. Everything that a person has to go through is written in heaven. So the fixing of the wine and the wheat, how do we do that? We do a Kiddush, Be'er of Shabbat. Yeah. At the eve of Shabbat, we do the Kiddush. We bless over the bread, Lechem Mishneh, and we bless over the wine. We cover the bread. First, we bless over the wine. And then we bless over the bread. We are fixing the fixing of the first human being, each and every, because we are part of him. We are part of the 
Please, please, listen. It's very important. It's very important. Dear women, let's, let's concentrate. Now, what happened when the first human being ate from the tree of knowledge? That came to the world. That came to the world. So, what happened? which means the candle of Hashem is the soul of a human being, okay? This is what King Solomon says. The candle of Hashem is the soul of a human being. Dear women, it says, and that, the, because those are the three things that are considered that he ate from it. Okay, Dear well, women, shh, listen, it's important. So how do we fix that he extinguished the light of the soul by bringing death to the world? Your husbands, when they do a kiddush, or if you do a kiddush, and you don't have a husband to do a kiddush, Dear women, when you bless over the wine, the husband should look at the candles and then lechaver, that with these, the light of the candles, he makes a fixing for the extinction of the light that was caused because of the first human being. This is part of the tikkun in the kiddush. In the Shabbat, he looks at the, when he blesses the wine, he looks at the Shabbat candles, and this is how he does a fixing for the sin of the first human being. <laughs> From my grandmother, I know where you do. And then if you. <laughs> but dear women, let me give you a story. So you see that when a person has a destination, he will come to it if he wants it or he doesn't want it. So I'll give you. You want to hear a story? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So there's a bit. Okay. Okay. How can one tree give fruit to grapes, figs, and wheat? That's a good question. This is interpretation. One says it's wheat, one says it's grape, and one says it's fig, a fig so tree. The but the truth is that it's part of each. It says, because the divine are looking for it's part of the three things, and that's why we celebrate the three holidays, which means that it can be Tena, because he took a leaf of Tena, God, yeah. and dressed them up, which means that the Tena had part of the sin, there. you understand? It was there, it was part of the sin. And then because it, our, our rabbis, uh, uh, you know, the first generations saw that we have to do a fixing of wine and bread, that's why Lecha Mishneh we also do because of the man, because on Friday God says you should collect man, twice, double for Friday and Saturday, so we have the Mishneh, so we're doing the fixing of the first human, which means this is also part of the sin of the first human being, and grapes, it says beautifully, Rashi, Rashi says, Balaturim uh, says, it says over there that the first human being said, my wife, Chabad, that you gave me, she hit me, and then she gave me wine to drink. <laughs> but she hit me until I, 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 until I, don't have, I didn't have any choice but to drink it. I couldn't. I, she put it in my throat. <laughs> yeah, that's how it's described. It's a beautiful. It says that Al-Shaba was afraid that if she will drink or eat from it alone, then she will die and nothing will happen to him, you will find another, another wife. So she said, whatever happens to me will happen to me and him together. <laughs> but I will, from here, just let me say something. Dear women, there's a beautiful story, dear women, uh, about a, a, a king. You okay? At Otamai? Teulai? It's a story about a king, Shayam Chasideu Motalam, which means he was a righteous king, you know, from the nations, and he knew Hashem. He was not Jewish, but he knew Hashem. So dear women, he had only one daughter, and he did not have any sons. And she spoke about dreams. Elsa. Elsa. 
Esther. Esther, so now I can remember you. Esther. Okay, so, so Esther said, she asked me about dreams. So this king was sleeping at night and he had a precious daughter. And he said, wow, I should, not, should find her a husband that is precious just like her. And I can trust him that he can rule with her over the kingdom. He was a very good king. One night he was sleeping, like Esther said, and he dreamt a dream. In his dream, he can see that one of his servants, he had a very a lawful servant, which was a black servant, but he was very old. He used to serve also his father. He was very loyal. He was so, so good. He was such a good servant that he loved him so much. But in his dream, he saw that he's marrying his daughter. He said, God forbid. He woke up He woke up in the middle of the night. He was all sweating. He said, no, not at all. He's very oppressed. He's old. He's a servant. He cannot marry my daughter. So he was tired. He felt again. He went to sleep again. You know, he felt he asleep again. Him. Yes. He sleeps again, and again the same dream. He sees that this servant is going to marry his daughter. He says, this can't be his shouting in his dream. He wakes up. He says, I, I shouldn't sleep. I, I shouldn't sleep. In because he was afraid to, that he was going to dream the same dream again. But then he was so tired, again he fell asleep. And then again, the same dream. He sees this, you know, he has wrinkles, he's very old, he barely stands straight. And now he's bent. <laughs> and he says, this person, my daughter is going to marry, he wakes up in the morning and is very disturbed. He loves the servant, but not in order to marry his daughter. So the treasurer of the kingdom, the treasurer of the kingdom, in the morning sees the king and he sees that the king is very troubled. He says, King, he says, My king, can you tell me what troubles you? He said, No, no, it's nothing. No, no. He says, Please tell me. No, no, you know this when you don't want to say anything. No, no, it's okay. He says, Please tell me, man, I can maybe I can help you. So then the king tells him his story. He says, You remember this servant, the tree he's very loyal and he also served my father and I trust him with everything that I have. But I dreamt three times at the same night that he's going to marry my daughter. The treasurer says, what are you talking about? He's so old. He barely walks. He's all wrinkles. He will marry your daughter. He says, yes, I dreamt that he's going to marry my daughter. He says, you know what? Let me handle him. Anita Pelbo, you know what handle means. He says, no, no, I don't want you to touch him. He's such a good person. I don't want nothing to happen to him. He says, okay, listen to what I'm going to tell him. And if you agree with it, let him go. Okay, so he calls the servant, and the servant comes and he, he bows to the king, and he says, Dear king, what do you want me to do for you? So the treasurer says, I will tell you what the king wants from you. The king wants you to go to Har Nebo, to the mountain of Nebo. You remember who went up the mountain of Nebo? Moshe Rabbeinu. And then he passed away. So he says, he says the king wants you to go over there and to meet Moshe Rabbeinu, and to ask him, he says, that if there's a destination to a person and it's written in heaven, if it can be changed or he has to go through it. Okay? He says, you have to go there and we will give you money and food and a horse. <laughs> and you have to, to find Moshe Rabbeinu and ask him. Don't come if you cannot find him. Now, you know, the treasurer thought that he, he will find Moshe Rabbeinu. Nobody finds Moshe Rabbeinu. You know, even the place that he was buried, Mul Bet Peor, it says that when you go over there, when you go uh, walk on the mountain, you think it's beneath the grave, you know, at the bottom. And then when you go to the bottom, you think it's up the grave. So you, you can never find the, the grave of Moshe Rabbeinu. But he tells him, you have to go. He was a loyal servant. He says, okay, I will go. Even if it takes you years. He says, okay, I will go. The king said, okay. You know, he said, oh, Baruch Hashem. The king was said, had a rebacha. He said, now he will go. Yes, meanwhile, my daughter will get married. Okay. Hopefully. This, hopefully she will get married to a young person. The child said, see, I handled it. We did not touch him in harm. Now he will walk. May it will take years. I don't know if he will come. If he won't pass away on the, on the way. <laughs> so he takes the horse. He takes Sedala <laughs> Dere. He takes Sedala Dere. And he starts to go. He comes to the Midbar Sahara. You know, the desert of Sahara. There between Iraq of today and Syria. 
he goes, he, he uh, tries to find a place in order to rest, and so he sees a couple of trees. He says, I will go over there. He sits under one of the trees over there, and while he's resting, and in show, enjoying the, the sorry, the king, while he's, he sees a few trees, and he's going and sits Leave over there. So while he's doing this, he, hear, he hears a voice calling him. Human being, human being, what are you doing here? Where did you come from? Uh -huh. So he says, wow, something is not right with it. There's nothing here. It's a desert. Who is calling me? So he looks around. Nobody's calling him. Again he hears, human being, human being, where did you come from? Where are you going? What are you doing here? <laughs> so he looks up and he sees that the tree is talking to him. The tree itself. So the tree, and you know that there are uh, Tanaim, there were righteous people who could speak the language of the trees. You know that. It says about Atanai Yochanan Bet Zakai that he knew the language, Sichat Ilanot, of the trees. So there are women, the tree speaking to him. He was astonished, but he's an old person, he will accept everything. He says, you know, I came from this kingdom, and the king that sent me to speak with Moshe Rabbeinu, Allah Shalom, he says, and to ask him to go to the mountain of Nebo and to ask him what happens to the destination of a person if he has to fulfill his destination this world. So the tree said, you know, if you are going to meet Moshe Rabbeinu, please ask a question for me. He says, I have also a question. He says, I'm here from Bereshis, from the beginning I'm here. I'm, the, I'm here from the beginning and I would like to tell you that there was a ne never a human being that came to sit under my, uh, my uh, branches, under my leaves, he says. And I don't have any fruit. I'm a tree without any fruit and nobody can. You're the first human being that came to sit under, my, under me, he says. Please ask Moshe Rabbeinu, what is my destination? Why am I here in this world? He says, please tell me. I think about it from the beginning until now. I, didn't, I don't have an answer. He says, you know what, dear tree, I will ask. I am searching for Moshe Rabbeinu, and I will find him, I'm going to ask him. Okay, so he continued to walk, and then he saw Eshte Brechot, ponds, two ponds, but the, the water was very dirty, but the water was, he couldn't drink from them. So he wanted to walk, to go from there, to trust them. And he heard, human being, human being, what are you doing here? Where are you going to? So he was looking around and he saw that the water in the, is asking him, what are you doing here? So he told them, I came from this kingdom and the king sent me to find Moshe Rabbeinu and to ask about the destination of a human being. So the two pawns said, please ask That's Moshe funny. Rabbeinu about us. We are two pawns here, we have dirty water, we don't do anything, we don't give, nobody drinks from us. So what is our destination in this world? We are from the beginning here. And we are waiting to know what is our destination in this world. So he says, okay, when I find Moshe Rabbeinu, I'm going to ask him. And then he came close to Har Nebo, and he was between two mountains before Har Nebo. And he's walking with a horse, and he sees a very old person with white beard, that very long beard until his uh, belly button. You know, the beard was long. And so he sees the old person and he says, he asks him this person, tell me, dear man, what are you doing here? So he says, my king sent me to Har Nebo, to the mountain of Nebo, to find Moshe Rabbeinu. He says, I am Moshe Rabbeinu. I am Moshe Rabbeinu, he says. So listen very carefully. Tell your king that the destination that is ordered from Hashem to the, every human being is this is the path that he has to go through because this is his fixing in this world. He cannot go right or left. This is the path that he has to. This was written for him from the beginning. And he has to do his fixing. By prayers he can change things, but it depends on this person. But the destination is already decided in heaven. So he said, yo, thank you very much, Moshe Rabbeinu, but can I ask you two more questions? Because while I was coming over here, there was a tree that asked me a question, and there were two ponds that asked me a question, and they asked me to ask you, and I told them that I will do them this favor. Will you answer me? I said, okay, ask me the question. So he said, 
there was a tree that asked me that he was from the beginning, he was created in the beginning, and until now, nobody enjoys him. He does not have fruit, he feels so lonely. He doesn't know what his destination in this world is. Moshe Rabbeinu told him, Allah Shalom Sukkot again, and he said, this tree has special powers. His branches, if you take his branches, and you know, and you break them down, and you boil them with water, if a person is very sick, and he fell from a place, and all his bones are broken, you give it to that person, he is healed. His branches. And then he says, but there's also the two ponds. Wait, wait, the two ponds. Also, there were two ponds, that there were, you know, dirty ponds, you cannot drink from them. So he says, oh, those are special ponds. If a person goes into the first pond, then if he's old, he will get out young. And the second pond, if he's black, he will get out white. Wait, wait, wait. He will get if he beats his body. He will get out white. Wait, wait, it's very important. But if another person, if another person comes to those two ponds, those two ponds get the characteristics of the first person, the first person that beat himself inside. So if another person comes and he is young and the first one that went in was old, he will deep and will get old. He will get out old. You understand? And if he was white, he will get out black. If the person before he was black, he gets the characteristic of the person that did himself before him. So he said, "Wow, thank you, Moshe Rabbeinu," and he blessed him, and he went to it. He came first to the two pans, and he told them. They said, "Did you ask Moshe Rabbeinu? Did you meet him? They were waiting for him." says, yes, I, may, I had uh, the merit from Hashem to meet him. I met him and he told me, what is your destination? He says, this pond, if a person goes oh, inside gosh. and if he's, if he's young, he will become old. Or if he's old, he will become young. And this, the second pond, it, the color of the skin changes. If he's white, he will become black. And if he's black, he will become white. So they were astonished and said, you know what, because you did us the service of asking our, what is our destination, we want you to go into us. So this, this servant, black servant and very old servant that had wrinkles and barely stood straight, went into the first pond and went out and he was young. He was young with all of his strength. He was in his youth. So he went to the other pond, and instead of being black, he went out white. He became white and young and strong. He said, thank you, and continue. Now he was continuing to the tree. <laughs> he continued to the tree, and he tells the tree, sees him, oh, hello, how are you, human being? Did you see Moshe Rabbeinu? Did you ask him? He said, yes, I met Moshe Rabbeinu. I had the Mary, and I asked him. So he said, and what did he tell you? What is my destination? He says, you have a healing power. Your branches have a healing power. If you take part of your branches and you cut them and you boil them in water, a sick person will get healed if he drinks from it. So he said, you know what, because you, you had the merit to give me the answer, please take part of my branches and keep it with you. You never know when you'll need it. Okay? Meanwhile, he goes back. Now he's young. He has the strength. He has the power. He has, the, you know, the life inside him. He wants to live. And he's not old anymore. He wants to live. He comes back to his kingdom. But he sees in his kingdom that people are speaking, you know, that razot, the decrees on, on walls of, of, of uh, houses and businesses that he who can heal the king will get a lot of money. He says, wow, my king is sick. So he found a boy over there and he said, tell me, what happened to the king? He said, how don't you know? Everybody knows what happened to the king. Where did you come from? He said, please tell me what happened to the king. So he says, the king was running after a deer. He was on a horse, you know, the hunting. So they went on a hunting trip and he was running after a deer. And the deer was, was running towards a mountain. And there was a valley at, at the end of the mountain. So the deer jumped into the valley, but nothing happened to him. But the horse, when it came to the edge of the valley, he, came fri he was frightened. Stop. So he tried to jump. He did not stop. He tried to jump, and he broke totally the horse. The horse died immediately, and the king, of course, all of his bones were broken. And he's barely alive. So what did this servant do? 
he t he, um, he, he he rented he rented a shop a store and he wrote a big note on it. I'm a new doctor in the city, a new doctor, and he was sitting over there. So I re I re nobody saw that before. So they said, "There's a new doctor. Maybe we should tell the, the king's daughter that there's a new doctor. She will come and heal the king. Maybe." So the daughter heard about it. She called her servants to call him. He came to the palace. And she said, everybody tried to heal the king, nobody succeeded. Can you heal the king? He says, Bezrat Hashem, I can heal the king, but I need, a, I have a few conditions. I would like you to put a bed that I can sleep near the king, inside the king's room. For three days, I would like no one to die. For three days, I would like no one to come, to enter the, the room. I would like to be alone with the king, and the only thing that I need is a tilia. Tilia you know, is a burner, so I can boil water. I need water and the burner, and that's what I need for three days, he said. So she thought about it, and she said, well, I have to agree with him because nobody can heal the king, and otherwise he will pass away. So let's give it a chance. Maybe he can heal him. So they closed the door, and for three days, he was, you know, he took the branches, he cut them to small pieces, he boiled the water, he gave the king to drink. The first day after he drank, the king started speaking because he couldn't speak anything. He was, you know, he, from the, the way he agony. fell, in the agony, yes, he was in agony, in pain, and it was, he was also in a state of shock from the way that he fell. So he, he could not speak, but now the first day he started speaking. At the second day, he felt that he can move himself a little, a little bit. He, can, he felt that he can move his neck and raise his head. At the third day, he gave him a double dose, and then he felt that he can walk out of the bed. So the, the servant helped him. He was walking out of the bed, and he called. The servant opened the door and called the daughter. The daughter saw this was a miracle. Nobody could cure him. So she was so happy. She thanked the new doctor. She kissed her father. She hugged him. Now the, the treasurer came to the king and he said, and he told the king, now we have to give him his price. A lot of money you said that you're going to give him. But he said, you know what? The treasurer says, do we need to let such a good doctor leave our kingdom? Isn't that better that we in, in marriage connection will connect him to the kingdom? The treasurer says. So the king says, wow, it's a good idea. Of course, he's a smart person, intelligent person, he looks good, he's young. We, I should marry my daughter with him. So he says, he says, I need to ask both of them if they agree. So he went to his daughter and asked her, said, Father, he healed you. Of course I will marry him. Uh -huh. She said, there's no question. And he went, he went to the servant and the servant was shocked because he didn't know everything. No. That, 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 he didn't know about the dream of the king. He was shocked because he remembers he's a servant and he was an old person and a black person. And he says to the king, wow, I'm so humble and thank you for the, the offer. And you, if you truly want me, I will be very happy to marry your daughter. Mm -hmm. In 10 days, they were married in a big wedding. No, it's, the, it's she's a daughter, she's a princess. A big wedding was. After a month, dear women, he tells, he tells his wife, go to the treasurer and tell her that the destination of a person, go to him and tell him that the destination of a person is fixed from heaven. It's written in heaven. So it seems weird for his wife, the daughter of the king, but she goes to the treasurer. The treasurer hears that, he faints. <laughs> says, well, how does he know that? I asked that the, the old servant, the black servant, to go to find Moshe Rabbeinu and to find the answer for this question. How did he give me the answer? He has, you know, he, he is very spiritual that he knows what I asked. Mm -hmm. So he comes to the doctor and he speaks with him alone. And he says, tell me, how do you know what I asked the servant that I sent from here? How did you know that? That this is a question that I asked. He says, I would like dear treasure to tell you, I am the servant. He fainted again. <laughs> 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 this, is the, this is the person. This was a person that was walking with a stiff belly, but he wasn't straight. We could all filled with wrinkles. He served the first king, and now he serves his son. It couldn't, and he was black. This was a white person, a white, a, a white, a white person. He says this couldn't be. 
So he sat and told him everything about the tree, about the two ponds. He heard about everything. Now he said, if he can become young and powerful, and he said, I should try it. And he said, I should try it too. So he said, show me on the map. Where is it? Where are the ponds? There are women. So he goes to the place of the farm, takes food and a horse and everything. He goes alone so nobody will know the secret. Now you remember the secret of the farm. You remember the secret. You remember the secret of the farm. He went into the first farm. He went out of it. He, he dipped his body inside. And he was so old, he can barely straighten himself. <laughs> oh, he was looking at his eyes and said, wow, what happened? I should have been young, younger than I, what I was. But he was old and wrinkled, so he said, maybe I went into the wrong pond. So he went to the second pond. And then he, he went, goes out and he cannot see himself. He does not know that now he's black. Okay, so he goes on the horse. He said, I did something wrong. And he goes back to the kingdom. And he wants to go into his home, and they throw him out. They, he says, but I am the treasurer. He's, they say, look at yourself. What are you talking about? You're a black servant and very old. You should sit in some place because you, you, you're almost passing away. We can see that. He says, but I am. And he tells his wife, I am your husband. I am your father. He tells his children, they do not believe him. But the only one that knew what happened to him was the, ki the, the doctor, <laughs> the king's son-in-law. So he told him, you have to go back. Now the characteristics of the pond is exactly his characteristic. You have to go back and dip yourself in the ponds again in order to go back to your previous self, <laughs> to be white and age the middle age, like you used to be. So he went back, he traveled again, and he went into the two ponds. And now he went out white and middle-aged, <laughs> exactly how he was before. When he came back, everybody knew who, who, who he was. But from this he learned that one of the characteristics that a person should mend in himself, first of all, is jealousy. Yeah. You should not want more than God gave you. You should be happy with, the, with what God gave you. And the second thing, that if a person is destined to marry someone, or to go or to study something, or to do something yeah. in this, in this <laughs> world, it won't right. help anyone. God will see to it yeah. that even if one person is at one side of earth, and the other one is, you know, in, yeah. in the other side of, yeah. of the globe, God will see that the, these people will meet each other and they will fulfill their yeah. destiny. Yes. So with these words, I would like dear women to tell to bless all of you that Yagiyah Mashiach to tell you Rabbi Amen that the Yara and the Mizahul Atov will be here as soon as possible with Zerat Hashem and the Rami Parad Adami Chadobit Barachai Yachid Barabim Alachak Terabim. God bless you.